Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Folly. And welcome to Podcast 2.2. Um, we're going to talk about how you always go through moles. Percent composition and empirical formulas. You need a periodic table. Hey, I told you you should have printed. So print the periodic table and equation sheet um, from the intro module um, from Canvas. And you also need a calculator. So... Hit pause, go get those things, and I'll wait for you. Okay, I'm done waiting. All right, so we got ourselves a mole. A mole is the fundamental definition of the amount of a material. So if someone says how much, they should be talking about moles, okay? So that means you're counted. These are counted things. Now, we don't really count them by one, two, three. We count them by weighing, but still, or by counting volume or something. There are 6.02 E23 or 6.02 E23, which is the format I use the most often, or 6.02 times 10 whoops, to the 23rd. Ah, weird line, but 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And that's how many particles are in a mole. Okay? Particles. So this is your second year of chemistry, so I'm sure that you remember doing a bunch of mole stuff before. And a mole is like a dozen. It's the number that we count. Because atoms and particles are really, really small, then our number's are really, really big. I think gram atomic mass of a mole of sodium. So if you look at your periodic table, um, you'll see something called a gram atomic mass. And that would be what is the mass of one sodium. Do, 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 do. Periodic table says 22.99. I do want to point out that we are going to pull two decimal places um, from the periodic table. So if it's 127.23, um, we'd use the 23. If it's 1.01, we'd use the 0.01. Man, this is easy so far. What is the mass of about 1.76 moles of magnesium cyanide? Now, AP Chemistry gives you the formulas for this, and we are going to learn... Um, how to name these a little bit later, but it's coming up. Um, but magnesium sign is MgCn taken place. So I want to find the mass. The unit for mass is grams. So I'm going to do whoops. I'm not going to do whoops. I'm going to do 1.76 grams of MgCn2. And I'm going to convert. I called that grams. I'm going to erase that and start. All over again. I, you know what? It was my color was the problem. 1.76, and I think I picked the same color. That's kind of funny. Mg Cn ah, taken twice times. Um, now I want to cancel this. So if I want to get rid of something, remember how if I have seven times three sevenths, I can cancel those sevens. So I'm gonna put the unit mole down here. Moles of Mg. Whoops. C and taken twice. So one mole of MgCn is going to equal the, I say little g stands for grams, and little g stands for go to the periodic table. So with me, please go to the periodic table. Magnesium is 24.31. I hope that's right. That's from my memory. Oops, my periodic table says 24.30. Okay. Now notice I have two Cs. This two, two carbon. So that means I have 12.01 times two. And 12.01, look at the periodic table, see where it says 12.01? I knew you did. And then I have two ends. So that's going to be 14.01 times two, which is 28.02. This is the only work in chemistry you don't need to show. Typically, they give you the molar masses, just to be honest with you. But I didn't. So 24.3 plus 24.02 plus 28.02 is 76.34. So that means there's 76.34 grams in a mole. So when I do this, notice how moles of MgCn2 will cancel, just like 7 cancel too. So I'm going to take 1.76 times 76.34. I'm going to get my answer of 134. Whoa, 134.4.4 grams of MgCn2. I can't write the 
word right, of M zero. zero. M zero. Yeah, boy, it won't let me write very well today. All right, so I'll skip that. I think we got it. How many atoms total are in 2.50 grams of barium hydroxide? And the formula for barium hydroxide is BaOH taken twice. So if I have 2.50 grams of barium hydroxide, um, and I want to go into atoms, okay, atoms I know are a little bitty thing, so now I'm going to have to use 6.02. But I don't know the conversion from grams to atoms, so first I'm going to go through a mole. So now as I write this, you get to hear me say, always go through moles, always go through moles, always go through moles, go through moles, go through moles, always go through moles, always go through moles, always go through moles. Okay. So the number one is going to go with moles. And the molar mass of barium hydroxide, and I need my, my periodic table to go and get it. Barium, periodic table, number 56, 137.33. We've got one barium. I have two oxygens again, so plus oxygen is 16 times 2, that's 32, and hydrogen is 1.01 .01 times 2, 2.02. So 137.33 plus 32, hey, that's interesting, I have a call from Brook, Indiana, um, plus 2.02, .02. I'll skip that because that is so confusing, instead of getting my spam phone calls. Now, this puts me into moles, but I want to know atoms. So, oh man, seems like I did nothing, but I'm partway there. So I'm going to hate moles this time. Ooh, get back here. I'm going to hate moles this time. First, I hated grams. Now I'm going to hate moles. So I'm going to put it on the bottom to make it cancel, but I need to know something that's equal to that. So I'm going to do, um, now BAOH taken twice is not an atom. It is a particle. It's a molecule. It's a formula unit. I'm going to call it a molecule, which is a little bit wrong, um, but uh, I'm going to call it a particle. Um, and it's going to be particles of BaOH taken twice. So I have one mole of BaOH taken twice, and that equals 6.02 E20. Now, how do I get this E on my calculator, you ask? I'm sure you thought that, but I'll get to that in just a second. Now, a particle is not a mole, so I'm going to put a particle down here. But I do know there are two, four, five atoms in one particle. So when I do that, that will give me the total number of atoms. And notice that cancels out um, particles of BaOH taken twice. So how do I get 6.02? And then you hit the second button, then you hit um, a comma button. That comma button is above the symbol. Here's number seven. You put it right there, okay? And then you would hit 23. That's the easiest way to do scientific notation. So let's put it on a calculator. 2.5 divided by 171.35 times 6.02 second comma 23 times the fiver. And my answer is... 4.39 E20. Boom! That's it. Percent composition empirical formula. So, percent composition, we've done percentages since about third grade. It's part over total. No big deal. Shouldn't be a big deal at all. I expect you guys to cruise through that. Empirical formula is if I have H2O or is it H2O2? These numbers matter. How do we do it? And that's what we're going to do. Um, percent by mass of each element in a compound. So that means just part over, I'm going to call it total total. Okay, I'm going to call it total total today because a lot of times people think it's part over big part. They accidentally do that. But it's part over total total. What is the percent of nitrogen and ammonia? Ammonia is NH3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the periodic table. So I'm going to do N over NH3. Nitrogen weighs 14.01. If you don't believe me, check that periodic table. And then nitrogen plus hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen is 17.04. 14.01 divided by 
is 0.822. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. What did I forget? Times 100%. Which is true. Uh, believe it or not, AP Chemistry will take us an answer 0.822, not 0.822%. Both of those are acceptable answers because the, the definition, the word percent means, per means divide by 100. That is the definition of per cent. Right. Never thought of that before. Okay. Empirical formula is the simplest formula for a compound. It's just a ratio. JJ rambles three times more than Anna. And Daniel rambles 30 times more than Anna. So that means... JJ is three times more than Anna, 30 times more than Anna, and that would be the formula. Find the empirical formula from data. So make sure you can do this or see it. Notice, always go through moles, always go through moles, always go through moles, always go through moles, always go through moles. Reduce by dividing the smallest answer. So if I have 0 0.8 and 0 0.4, and I want to make, the, make them whole numbers, I can divide by the smallest. And the smallest one will always give you one, and this will have to be bigger than one. Okay. Multiply to get a whole number. So you do need to be able to eyeball the most common fraction or decimal fractions that you see. And clearly no particular order. The answer for what you get three is the subscript of the formula. Always go through. I was go through moles. 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 What is the empirical formula for a compound that is 24.3% carbon, 4.1% hydrogen, and the remainder chlorine? So the first thing is, is I can assume any size sample I want. I'm going to assume a 100 gram sample because that would mean that I have 24.3 grams of carbon, 4.1 grams of hydrogen, and 100 minus 24.3 minus 4.1, 71.6 grams of chlorine. I gave myself double lines here, so there's extra space. Because I'm doing like fractional things, I'm converting. So what am I going to do? I'm going to convert this into moles. One mole of carbon is 12.01 grams of carbon. Okay, boom. One mole of hydrogen. Hey, I'm going through moles. 1.01 grams of hydrogen. Uh, one mole of chlorine is 35.45 grams of chlorine. Now, where do these numbers come from? Periodic table, periodic table, periodic table. And if you look for those elements, you'll find them. All right, so 24.3. Divided by 12.01 is 2.02. 4.1 divided by 1.01 is 4.06. I'm going to put by 4.9. I'm sorry, 4.059. I'm going to 2.023. I'm giving some extra numbers because we're going to be rounding here in a minute. Ah, darn it. 71.6 divided by 35.45 is 2.197. So what I'm going to do here is to get these to be whole numbers is divide by the smallest. Divided by 2.0197, divided by 2.0197, divided by 2.0197. This one I can do in my head is 2, two points. I double point. 0.023 divided by 2.0197 is 1.00. And 4.059, oh man, 5.9 divided by 2.0197 is 2.00 or 2.01. That's true. So what that means is the formula, the empirical formula for this is 1C, 2Hs, and uno chlorine. That's the empirical formula. So again, show you how I did that. I'm going to get out my highlighting tool, change them into masses from percentages. Okay? Always go through moles, always go through moles, always go through moles. Divide by small, divide by small, divide by small. And typically, you might be able to either round it or eyeball what they're going to be. Or a whole number. And that rounding, that 
um, kind rounding, generous rounding, is what you have to do for this. Oop. Molecular formula. The exact formula of a molecule. It's unreduced. So Lulu rambled twice. Emma rambled six times. And Catherine rambled 970 times. That means my exact formula would be L6E2C970. Do you see how I could reduce this to be L3E? Catherine is still at an amazingly 485. Right? If I reduced it, this would be the empirical formula because it's reduced. This is the molecular formula, it's the exact formula. So, how do we do that? Oops. To find the molecular formula from data. Step one, find L empirical formula. Two, take the molecular mass. That means go to periodic table and divide it by the empirical mass, which means go to periodic table to find the multiplier. And then I didn't put down multiply because, gosh, that's just silly. If the empirical formula found before had a molecular mass of 199, what is molecular? Our empirical formula found before was CH2Cl. Okay, so the mass, this is my empirical formula. M. So the mass of that was 12.01, right? So carbon is 12.01 plus 2.02, .02, whoops, plus 35.45. And I have 49.48. So if the empirical formula found before at a molecular mass of 199. So remember, I'm going to take big one divided by small one. 199 divided, oops, I hit clear. 199 divided by a second answer equals 4.02. Okay, that's four. So I'm going to multiply by four. So CH2Cl times C4 H8. CL4. And that's it. Notice how that's clearly reducible, but that's the exact formula, which we will call the molecular formula. They always go through moles. Empirical formulas are moles. Molecular formulas are moles. We're going to form the formula of a hydrate, and that's what we're doing um, with moles and stuff. So this is really a preview. We'll talk about it a lot more in class on Monday. So I look forward to seeing you then.